In this video, I'm going to react to Bill Burr, Black Friends, Clothes and Harlem. Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. This is the place where I react to music, media, sports, anime, anything related to popular culture. I'll watch it with an open mind and give you my 100% honest reaction to it. And if you could please hit that like button early, I'd really, really appreciate it. Now this should be a lot of fun just because Bill Burr is probably one of my favorite comedians at the moment. The guy, you know, he just doesn't hold back. If he, if he writes, if he feels like he's got something funny in his head, he's not gonna think, oh my God, I'm so scared about, you know, how people are gonna take this. I don't wanna be, you know, canceled or anything like that. You know, he just, he speaks from the heart. And in, you know, 2021, it's hard to find people, you know, out there, especially people who work in showbiz that are you know, brave enough to just tell it how they think it, not to like, not to put their views through many different filters, you know? Yeah, so this is why I really like Bill Burr. In this video here, I've got no idea what it's about, but based on the title, I know it's gonna probably have quite a few, um, you know, interesting takes, but yeah, let's, let's just do it, let's go for it. So let's go, this is gonna be me reacting to Bill Burr, Black Friends, Clothes in Harlem. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Actually, I got a couple of uh, friends of uh, African persuasion. And, uh, <laughs> I got to get rid of them, man. I got to admit to you. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm spending too much money on clothes hanging out with them. Because I got to, like, fucking try to keep up with their wardrobe. It's like every time they go out, they got all brand new shit on. <laughs> all brand new shit. So when I show up with my white version of brand new, which is, you know, I basically, I iron the shit, right? I iron it, right? It's new. They just start trashing me. I can't keep up with them, man. They got like fucking 58 pairs of sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I, I don't really buy clothes that much. I probably should. <laughs> you guys are probably sick of me wearing the same like t-shirts in these vids. <laughs> Notice that shit? Like every color fucking Timberland. And I don't give a shit what fucked up color their shirt is. They got a pair of shoes to match it and a hat. <laughs> What's going on? There we go. It's like a rule or something. They're the worst. Even when you wear some new shit, there's like some sort of rule that you gotta like space out the amount of time with, within which like that you wear it. Cause God forbid you wear the same shirt within a 10 day period, one of them's gonna notice. All of a sudden just look at you funny like, this motherfucker's got the same shit he had on last Tuesday. And then the whole car's like, oh shit. <laughs> Everybody just starts making fun of your fucking clothes. First they do the math, like, what was that, five days ago? Five days, this motherfucker got five shirts. He got five shirts. And they start breaking it down. Yo, his first shirt be saying Monday. Next shit be saying Tuesday. Yo, on the weekend, he ain't be wearing no shirts. I'll tell you, that's actually funny. You know what? That's actually how, uh, how I judge black guys now. When I first came to the city, like, all black people scared me. <laughs> no, I was like the typical white dude from like the suburbs, you know what I mean? I had no frame of reference, you know? So my only frame of reference with black people was like, those, remember those early 90s gangster rap videos? <laughs> those fucking LA riots in there, man. It was fucking horrible PR. <laughs> I'm watching the videos. I love how the crowd is, like, this is the thing about Bill. Like, he, he some of his jokes, like make the crowd so uncomfortable that even if they want to laugh, they won't do it. <laughs> They'll be like, oh. So he's got nice cars, he's got all the women and he's still fucking mad. <laughs> These black dudes are never happy. <laughs> but after 10 years of living in the sea, this is how I narrow it down. Whether well, black dude scares me or not. Black dudes with dirty sneakers scare the fucking shit out of me. <laughs> no. <laughs> because I know from hanging out with them, that's the last shit that they're gonna let go, the immediate shit that they have on. So I think, you know, if his sneakers are fucked up, that means his life is fucked up. Every time he leaves his building, the whole neighborhood, oh, shit! <laughs> Everyone starts making fun of him. He's on the train in a bad mood. I kind of have this howdy doody, kind of mug me kind of face. <laughs> mug me kind of face. 
Now, I'm not saying something's gonna happen, I'm just saying, I'm paying attention. Oh. Uh. So I've been seeing this girl recently, uh, this black girl, right? She lives up in Harlem, you know? Gone out like three, four times, you know? First time we hung out, we hung out in like the village area in New York, you know, which is sort of like a racially mixed area. <laughs> so shit was cool, you know what I mean? Second time we hung out was more like midtown, you know? Then the third time, she called me at like 3.30 in the morning and she wanted me to come up to her apartment, right? So it's 3.30 in the morning, she lives in Harlem. Uh, did you hear the clap from the audience? <laughs> They're like, yeah, go, Bill. <laughs> I look how I look, so it's a fucking situation. <laughs> yeah, cause you know the deal, right? Basically, a white dude feels comfortable up to about like 98th, 99th street, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> The second the streets start getting to like triple digits, like 100, 101st Street, start getting like a little asthma, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, we're starting to get a little high up here. <laughs> you feel that little tightness in your chest? Can you feel that? 106th Street, you're like leaning on shit, like, dude, where'd all the cabs go? How come there's no taxis up here? <laughs> dude, what's a bodega? <laughs> I don't know what that is, let's get, let's get the fuck out of here. What is a bodega? I've heard that word in quite a few like uh, hip hop tracks. What is a bodega? So I'm praying to God she's gonna tell me to take the subway, get off at like 105th Street, 103rd, you know, which is like the first stop in Harlem where I can still look over my shoulder and see like all the white people like disappearing over the horizon, you know? But she goes, no man, you wanna get on the Uptown 2-3 train, you wanna get off at 125th Street. I'm like, ah, fuck, 125th Street. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's like right in the middle of everything. <laughs> I'm gonna be surrounded on all four sides. I can't fucking do this. <laughs> so, at this point, I'm really trying to hide like the bitchy tone that's starting to creep into my voice, you know? And I'm trying to ask for He's trying to put up a front. He's like, yeah, don't worry, I'll be there. It's no problem. Whereas on the inside, his heart's like, Really specific directions for when I get up there because I want to know exactly where I'm going. So she starts naming the streets I have to go down and every other street up there is named after like a black leader, you know, she's like, make a left on Adam Clayton, take a right on Frederick Douglass. I'm like, ah, fuck Adam Clayton. <laughs> Yo, dude, go on the internet, look up Adam Clayton. Did he kill a bunch of white people during the slave revolt? <laughs> dude, I ain't going up there till I know what Adam Clayton did. Fuck this shit. <laughs> oh. So at this point, I'm really having a battle with myself. Because I'm thinking I can't do this, right? I'm like, I can't do this, but my dick's going, no, come on, man, we can do this, all right? <laughs> Just relax. Pull yourself together and get on the goddamn train, right? So as always, I listen to my dick. <laughs> oh, yeah, I get on the train. By the time I get up there, it's like 5 or 4 in the morning, right? I'm staying on, like, Malcolm X and, like, Danny Glover or some shit, right? <laughs> I don't even know where the hell I'm at. Danny Glover, isn't he a rapper? <laughs> Does he have his own street? No way, no way. When I see the street, I wanna go up. I wanna go up St. Nick. I can literally see her apartment building, but there's like five or six black dudes standing right on the corner, right where I wanna walk by. So I'm like, fuck! <laughs> I felt like I was on like some reality show at that point, like some sort of like white guy survivor. He was ridiculous. <laughs> so I'm thinking, I gotta walk right by these guys, right? You know what's funny? I think that they were actually more surprised to see me than I was scared, you know? And I was really, really scared, you know? But I'm also really, really white, you know? Like, shockingly Caucasian. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if you're not ready for me, I can, like, surprise you. <laughs> no, especially if you live up there. You've probably seen a white person for hours, <laughs> possibly days. So when I show up, it's almost like magical. Like a leprechaun came out of nowhere, you know? I felt like I should have had like a little pot of gold, <laughs> like a rainbow behind me. Top of the morning to you, latte. Just kind of dance my way past him. Bill does look pretty Irish, to be fair. He definitely has Irish in him, for sure. But it's been going all right, you know? Once I get in her apartment, I'm fine, you know? I relax, sit down, you know, watch a hip hop countdown. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend like I know the groups, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just getting there that's a fucking pain in the ass. Why didn't he just get a taxi or an Uber? Or maybe this was before Uber? But you know, I don't get mad at it because I figure, you know, black dudes got to go through the same shit though, right? When you go out to the suburbs, go fuck a white girl. 
right? <laughs> just that same awful feeling of just leaving your people behind, you know, just less and less of you as you're fucking driving out there. Probably start off lean and you're all fucking cool. 20 minutes in, you're driving like 10 and 2, the radio's up. Like, dude, I don't like this shit. I don't like this shit at all. There's too much grass, I don't see any rims. This is fucked up. None of the windows are tinted. I can clearly see white people in every car. This is fucked up. Listen, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much for coming out. God bless you. Thank you very much. That was good. Bye, man. <laughs> this is why I love Bill Burr, honestly. I mean, the guy, he's funny. He's just so funny and he doesn't hold back. He just, he just says it like, you know, he doesn't filter any of his jokes. Like the joke about the rims and the black guy driving into the suburbs. And he starts off leaning and then he's ending like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just love Bill Burr. Hopefully he never changes. Just stay as you are. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, turn on bell notifications, and keep throwing the recommendations my way. I know I say it all the time, but they genuinely help me out because if I know you enjoyed watching something, I'll definitely enjoy reacting to it. So like, subscribe, turn on bell notifications, keep throwing the recommendations, and I'll catch you in the next one.